Greetings and salutations, YouTube viewers. Welcome back to the top 10 list. As everybody loves a top 10 list for some odd reason. It's just a shame that not everybody can count to 10. So, this week's topic is the top 10 Mass Effect scenes. These are my favorite scenes from the series of Mass Effect. Not all of them from the same game, but all of them were potent in some way, shape, or form. Mass Effect as a series had a lot of great scenes, a lot of fantastic writing that went along with this, you know, really epic sci-fi series. Well, we can debate to we're blue in the face how it ended. <laughs> how it ended. Uh, but it's really irrelevant because the rest of it was just a fantastic journey. It's just a shame that most of it was like a famous novel. Like your Walton or your... Or your Great Gatsby. That was just finished off. Like it was written by, I don't know, some cracked out monkey. But, that doesn't mean that the rest of the story wasn't phenomenal. So, I'll, this is my opinion of what I thought the greatest scenes were. There were a lot of great scenes. And I'm sure you all have your own choices about what were phenomenal scenes. So, here we go. Number 10, and Commander Shepard's induction into the Spectres. I don't know that Mass Effect would exist without this particular scene. Because it seems like the impetus, the entire goal seemed to have been getting a human into the ranks of the Citadel Spectres. This specialized unit of reconnaissance and special forces type individuals who fight for the Council. Now, one of their agents has gone rogue and is creating chaos across the galactic plane. Well, really in Citadel space, but he's also getting around. And the only other person, the only other sentient being that can possibly stop him is another Spectre. Because it can't legally be dealt with elsewise. Or, I don't know, I guess mercenaries aren't capable enough of taking out Saren, so it has to be another Spectre. Well, at least when it comes to a response from the Citadel Council themselves. Elsewise, I guess, meh, whatever. But Commander Shepard is more than willing to pick up the slack and go after Saren, him or herself. Now, the rest of the series seems to have dropped the concept of the Spectre for the most part. I mean, it's not as important for the other games. But the first game definitely is very important for the character to be a Spectre in order for all of this to be legitimized. Which makes it a very intriguing story. This whole journey starts with being recognized by the Citadel Council of you being the one person in all the galaxy who can bring di and who can restore some sort of peace to the ranks of the Spectres and hopefully amongst the colonies. It's my number 10 because this is what starts the series. This is what jump starts the story. This is what gets us invested in the characters that we have developed. You should go down to the CSEC Academy and speak to the Spectre Requisition Officer. Number 9. The Suicide of Saren. Mass Effect has always set itself apart as one of the more mature series on any of the video game consoles. Certainly the storytelling is something that we've come to expect from a company such as Bioware. I mean, they have been doing great storytelling since, you know, their earlier days at Baldur's Gates and Knights of the Old Republic. So, they know a good story, and they bring the heat when it comes to actually delivering that story. For the most part, again, we won't discuss some of the later controversies. Uh, the ending to this series. And, of course, the divisive game of Dragon Age 2. But, for the most part, Bioware storytelling is impeccable. And Mass Effect delivered the goods on that front. So we knew that we were having something serious here. That this wasn't something they were playing with. When you 
as the commander can convince Saren to just do himself in. Now, granted, we do have our regular boss fight, quote unquote, afterwards, but if not for the ability to be able to make yourself an extreme paragon or extreme renegade, this scene wouldn't exist. And, I, and it gives us an idea of who these characters are, what their roles are in the galaxy. Now, this is at the end, so we should already have a very good idea, but it kind of humanizes the enemy as well. Makes us realize that there is a sense of duty still left in him. And then he does have regret that he's fallen so far, even though he's probably the galaxy's biggest dick. I mean, after all, if you read the novel, as you know, he's kind of a bastard. Well, even playing a game, you realize that. But I knew that this was a great way of delivering this game. Because I had already been satisfied going all the way through the first game. And getting up to that scene just solidified my respect for the Mass Effect series itself. And I was so eager to play the second one. Which at this point hadn't even come out yet. But I still love this scene. Uh, is it really poignant? Uh, I believe it is. I believe that this is a poignant scene that stands out in the series. There are a lot more poignant scenes to come later in the series, but this is one of the first ones where the storytelling just kind of had this luscious wrap-up, and I loved it. Number 8. The Garrus Shepard Bromance, or Romance, on the Citadel. Now, if you'd been friendly with, you know, Garrus this, uh, this entire time, and he'd been part of your team, and you'd hang out with him, and you had been, and you, and you had been friends, and friends with him, and this, and this guy has come to be one of your more beloved teammates, there's this extra little scenario that takes place in Mass Effect 3. Of course, it might be available regardless, but I'm pretty sure that the nicer you are to him, the more he's going to want to hang out with you. And this is a pretty cool scene. One way or another, where you're romancing him as a female shepherd, or your best buds with him as a male shepherd, he's going to want to go up on top of this crazy place in the Presidium and shoot bottles. Because, well, he wants to prove who's the best sniper ever. Now, one thing I loved about the scene is that it really demonstrated the camaraderie between these two characters. Now you can let him win, or you can try to win yourself. But letting him win probably comes up with one of the funniest lines from Garrus, in my opinion. And not just, uh, can this wait for a bit? I'm in the middle of some calibrations. That was pretty amusing, too. But I love this scene. I loved everything to stand for. I love the fact that they're building such character, you know, characterizations in this particular game. And despite how Mass Effect 3 ended, it's probably one of the, it's probably the best game in the series when it can, comes to story writing for the first 90% of the game. There's this amazingly well done scenes. Now there are some hiccups of course with plot points and how things work together, but the characterizations, the emotional delivery, this is the one of them that stands out as being very powerful in my opinion and uh, I just wish there was you know I, I just wish there was more of it number seven the death of Shepard not to be confused with the uh, multicolored ending we have actually his or her first death at the very beginning of Mass Effect 2. Now, this is a great scene because it meant that they were willing to kill anybody of the crew. Now, of course, they do bring them back, you know, bring them back, bring the character back because, well, it's hard to have Mass Effect, this Mass Effect trilogy, without Commander Shepard because it is Commander Shepard's story. But it is an interesting scene in that it shows this complete destruction of the Normandy. Sure, it's them pushing the reset button so they can make a bigger ship. And, you know, it is a way of getting the characters from point A to point B 
a little bit more simply than I guess it could have had. Just, hey, you're going to work with Cerberus now. But it certainly had a dramatic flair about it. It had this establishment of a new enemy that was relentless and wasn't going to pull its punches, wasn't going to miss. It was going to hit dead on. And it was kind of a game changer for Shepard. I love how it was kind of a salute to what's come before and a herald of what was yet to come. And without a doubt, it catches, it catches your attention at the beginning of the story. It's supposed to hold your attention to the end of the game. And Mass Effect 2 did deliver on that promise. Now, there's some differences of opinions of whether it was a good game or not because some people didn't like the fact that it became more like uh, Gears of War or something like that because it was more of a shooter than it was an RPG. This is true, but there were still heavy RPG elements in it. Even though its flavor did change, it was still, if you compare it to the first game, pretty much Mass Effect. And though this scene was altering to the formula to some degree, I think it still holds its weight. And I still enjoyed it as one of my favorite scenes. And it was one of my favorite games in the series. I don't think there's any part of Mass Effect as a series that I really hated. Uh, of course, yeah. And this is one of my favorite scenes, and that's why it's at number 7, because I think it had a lot of power behind it, and it expressed exactly what they were trying to do with the new direction of the series. And that can only be a good thing. Number 6. Ah, uh, guest appearance on the filming of the new Blasto movie. <laughs> oh, God. If you downloaded the Citadel DLC, there is a special little scene on the Citadel that you could become a part of, particularly if you have Javik with you. Now, Mass Effect 3 <laughs> had this unfortunate tendency to have a lot of separate DLC, and including one of them was, um, was Javik, which you had to have, and of course the Citadel package, which you have to have in order to unlock this scene. Essentially, Javik has been invited uh, for a guest appearance on the new Blasto movie. And Shepard tags along for the ride. Now, I love the concept of Blasto. I used to stop in Mass Effect 2 and listen to the little blurbs about the new Blasto movies in the hallways on Ilium. And I thought it would be hilarious to actually see Blasto and how Blasto would actually be able to move. And I have to say, not really disappointed. This was a funny scene, and that's why it's made it to my number six, because, damn, it made me laugh. Number five, Morden's Sacrifice. If there's ever any sequence of events in Mass Effect 3 that shows just how powerful the storytelling is, it's the sacrifice of Morden. This scene is definitely very beloved in the community because of how well done it is. Because it makes so much sense. And it's interesting that there was any sort of controversy when it came to the ending over, oh, people just didn't want their character to die. When so many people loved how Morden sacrificed himself for the good of this world and knowing that he was the only one that could bring about a conclusion to this issue. Now sure, you can actually stop that from happening by being an ultimate asshole. But even then, this scene still has a lot of potency and a lot of power and is really well done. It shows how far the series has come in its writing and how far it will go in the future. And of all the poignant moments and all uh, of all three of the games this one stands out as a demonstration of just how good this series can be number four all the fond farewells hey commander what? now in mass effect 3 the you know the, the whole sequence of events is not really one scene it's more like a whole sequence of hey. events of fall and farewells where you get to the end of the London level on Earth and basically are 
Yeah, you're almost at the end anyway. I probably hang. Uh, probably a little bit past the halfway point. And you're talking to all your colleagues, and you're basically saying goodbye to them. Which was, uh, my aware's intent is for you to say goodbye to your team. And I would rather they had fleshed it out a little bit more to include the rest of the game. But, I mean, this is really good. Uh, it takes some time to get through, and there are some really passionate things said from one character to another. And, and it makes you really sad, and it does elicit an emotional response. Which is a testament to the power of good storytelling. And that's why I put it at number four, because the characterizations have always been something I enjoyed in the series. And this one certainly came out a long way to kind of bring it full circle about why they're all together and, and why they work so well together. And... And I thought it was very poignant to basically cap off the series, this trilogy, with this emotional goodbye. Now, Shepard's speech to the crew later on, not so powerful, certainly nowhere near as good as in Mass Effect 2 uh, when it came to going on a suicide mission. Uh, but maybe they wanted to tone it down a bit and be more down to earth. Um, no pun intended. So, that's why it's here, my number four, and that's why I enjoy the scenes. And that's one of the reasons why I really think that Mass Effect 3 may just very well be the best game in a series. Number three. Tally's Emergency Induction Port. Now, this is a amusing little scene that's not really a cut scene, but more of listening to a character talk. It happens aboard the Normandy after the mission with Miranda. Now, whether Miranda dies or not, you're going to find Tally stewing in her own um, I didn't realize this would be so hard. self rumination, self doubt, self loathing. I don't know. She's sitting there getting drunk in the mess hall. Which is pretty amusing because you sit there and you listen to her, and Shepard asks her how it is that. She's getting drunk, and she says that she has an emergency induction port that she's using to deliver the liquid, and to which Shepard replies, it's a straw tally. And she replies back, emergency induction port. Good for a great laugh, and I think a very amusing scene that is one of my favorites throughout the entire series. It's one of my favorites because, well, I had actually developed a romance with Tally, because as soon as that option was available in 2, yeah, I was all over that. Haha, <laughs> forget Liara, Tally was where is that. And so, that meant something to me. It was endearing. And hey, you can't go wrong with endearing. Does it bring anything to the series? Eh, not really. Except to show that Tally's amusing. Does it really make sense that Miranda lives? Eh, not really. It does seem a little awkward if Miranda lives because she's talking in a way that suggests that Miranda may have died, which is probably what the scene was intended for. And that's how I got it the first time, but the second time I played through, I got the scene and Miranda had lived because I did things slightly different. But that's alright. I, I still find the scene immensely amusing and that's why it's here at my number three number two reapers arrive on earth oh here's a scene that you would think this is a whole sequence of events that you would think would be my number one but it was just barely edged out by something else but this when the reapers arrive on earth let me tell you something i've been waiting for this event since the first game and I was not disappointed when we finally got to it. The Reapers touched down on Earth. The Human Council doesn't believe that the Reapers are a threat. Doesn't believe they're coming. But then they realize something's up. Something's amiss. They lost contact with Pluto. They've lost contact with the Moon. Something's coming. There's a broadcast from London. Oh my god, what is that? And then suddenly, they're on their doorstep. Oh, so beautiful. Getting outside and seeing those beasts just ripping Vancouver apart. Not that I want to see that for real, mind you. I think Vancouver's a cool place. But it was just intense to see the Reapers on Earth and realizing this shit is real. And what are they going to do? How are they going to get out of it? Whether or not the final delivery was up to anyone's expectations is debatable. But what's not debatable 
is that Bioware delivered the goods with their arrival. And they did so, ah, oh, in just blatantly gorgeous style. I loved it. And it's my number two. Ah, oh, brilliant. Brilliant. So stoked when I first saw it. So stoked. And still stoked. I don't know if you can tell. But this is important to the series because this is what we've been leading up to. Facing the Reapers. The ship has been trying to stop them from getting to Earth. But even in all those endeavors, it kind of kind of reflects a little bit of real life, honestly. Because people refuse to believe things. People refuse to see a threat until it's too late. And it's difficult to get people to respond to these threats. Just like in real life, there are numerous topics that can be a comparison to the Reapers arrive that we face on a day-to-day -day basis because so many people just refuse to believe what all the evidence is showing. This brings that home. This delivers on promises. And this, ugh, this was so close to being number one. But I have another choice for number one. Number one. Suicide Mission, Mass Effect 2. That's right, my favorite scene quote unquote or sequence of events is the suicide mission because whereas the best storytelling came from Mass Effect 3 the best delivery of an ending came in Mass Effect 2 this was how a game should end this is actually how a series should end this is a phenomenal action packed delivery of the goods that we've come to expect you got to, you know, you have the collectors. They're a menace to the human colonies. And the only way to stop them is to go in there and kick your, and kick their asses personally. Going through the, you know, the Omega Relay. Going to their home turf. Traversing the minefield that is the junkyard surrounding their, their headquarters. And then getting there. Nice and easy. And just going balls to the wall. Just ballistic on every one of them. What was it? Sam Jackson said in a, in a movie, I, I think it was ja uh, Jackie Brown. He was referring to the AK-47, but I think it could apply to any weapon in Mass Effect. When every motherfucker in the room has absolutely got to die, except no substitutes. That's how I felt about the suicide mission and just how epic it was. Now, your character can come through alive with all the teammates. In this epic glory of destroying everything and coming out alive on the other end, going back to the normality and going back to human space and saying, This is what we did. We just saved the colonies and now we're going to save Earth. Or everybody can die in a blaze of glory and Joker is the only one that manages to escape. And that's phenomenal too. It's just so well done in all the choices in the delivery of the finale. I just wish Mass Effect 3 had had something similar. They could have delivered the goods. It didn't have to be that many different endings. And after all, Mass Effect 2 didn't have that many different endings. But you had a lot of choice and variety in just that one sequence of events that could go any number of ways. And still, you didn't have to change a whole lot. It was epic, it was powerful, and was a great capper to a great series, to a great game. And that's what should have happened. And that's why that's my number one because that is everything I would expect from an ending to a series. And it just got me stoked so much for Mass Effect 3. And I really enjoyed Mass Effect 3. And I wished that that was kind of the ending to the series that we had got something to that effect. Barreling down on Harbinger or something like that. Harbinger, a phenomenal enemy that could have gone really far. So really crazy places and you know, we were kind of let down on that but there you go that's the way it is beautifully done and I think really really shows the capacity of the action aspect of Mass Effect series and still delivering a really excellent story in the process And there you go, that's my top 10 list. Uh, sorry it took so long to get this up here. Been a lot going on. But it's here. And hopefully I'll have another one in short order. I would like to try to do this you know, weekly. 
course, between work and everything else, it gets a little challenging. I'd like to thank you for watching. And now, Mass Effect as a series can be a little controversial in certain aspects of it, but there are a lot of people who really love the series. I'm one of them. I love science fiction, I love good storytelling. The whole series has delivered great storytelling. And I'm glad I was able to find these videos so I could show it to you and deliver something a little different from my last top 10. And I'm having high expectations for the next Mass Effect game that even though they're changing the dynamics of the environment some, I'm hoping it'll deliver on a storytelling front and have a potent ending as well. Something that really does brings everything full circle, brings it around, and they don't try to take the easy way out with a multicolored ending, uh, a, a quick delivery with a finale, uh, that they actually learn the lessons from how they botched the ending to three, while also recognizing how powerful the storytelling was in one and two. Hopefully that Whatever storyline they're developing will end on a powerful note. Uh, if it's a new trilogy, hopefully it will all be just an amazing story that we know that they can write and deliver. And I'm looking forward to seeing just what it is that they can do. But for now, thank you for watching this. And uh, stay tuned. For more of my little videos. Hopefully I will have these up per week. We'll see what happens. But until later. Take it easy. And uh, I'll catch you on the flip side.